Uh, welcome back to VTU e Shikshana program. Uh, we will continue our discussion on the interface. Okay. And uh, here we are going to look at how an interface is being used as a module port. Okay. In the example uh, that I was discussed previously, uh, I had uh, shown a simple use of interface uh, where interface pins are used in the module uh, RAM. Okay. And I am going to, this is a generic interface port declaration using the interface. And uh, here is another example where the module port itself is the interface. So, as you see here, uh, the in, I mean this is how this is going to be done. A module port can be explicitly declared as a specific type of an interface and this is by, uh, this is done by using the name of the interface as the port type and the syntax is going to be module uh, associated with the module name. Uh, we will mention what is the, which is the interface that is going to be associated with this module and we will list what is the port name which is going to be used as the interface. Uh, and as you see, the example that is given in the uh, red part uh, is going to be mentioning the interface and in this case the same interface which was shown earlier is being uh, declared here that is chip underscore bus and uh, end interface. You may have signals listed here, but what I am seeing here is uh, there is a module cache okay, which uses the ports that are declared in the interface chip bus and they have been named as pins and along with that I may have a rest of the signals and that can be listed and I can add any behavior to this and end module. So, this is another way of using the interface as module for, uh, ports other than the signal list in different modules. So, an interface construct so far what we have used is going to be just listing the signals with the uh, direction and the length data width what we say and also with respect to the type that is two state or four state. Other than that a construct can have, so only uh, two different cases we have seen that is how to declare an interface, how to use them in different blocks to connect the different modules and also we have seen what is the difference between interface and the module. And also we have seen how to uh, declare the ports and also the directions in an interface. So apart from this, an interface can also have routines such as tasks and functions and we also declare certain methods associated with the interface and we can use procedural blocks in interfaces. And we can also use parameterized interfaces that is uh, sometimes the length of the bus can be varied say from 8 to 16 or from 16 to 32 or a 32 bit uh, signal can be made 8 bit. So, in that case we can make use of parameterized interfaces to our, I mean offer different sized uh, signals with respect to the data width. So, if we are going to discuss these things in the coming uh, sessions, but before that we need to now look at an another example. Of course, we have seen the arbiter as an example with test bench, okay, just by listing the signals and with an interface. But what I am going to show you is now 
uh, with the tool how to write an interface uh, for a very simple module like a, an adder and also how to use an interface in such a, a small design okay though it is going to complicate the test range not an issue but that is the best way to learn how to build the interface and how to use them to test a particular design. And the same design which is a combinational adder has been slightly altered uh, with clock and reset and uh, that design is also being shown with an interface and in this case the set of signals which are globally used that is the clock and the reset are going to be used as an interface. So, I will take you through the inter, uh, EDA playground tool and I can use any simulator and you are also going to see some of the features that is going to be the part of verifying a design using system Verilog and not only with the interface, there are other ways to look at the verifying the design, say for example. Uh, if we are declaring the list of signals, how they are going to be varying that is going to be termed as the transaction and we generate different signals, we drive them and uh, we monitor the results with respect to a predefined result list and then there is an agent. Okay. And whenever uh, we generate and drive and compare that in a mon uh, with the monitor, okay, we now generate what is called scoreboard, where we, we are going to actually list how many cases are going to be passed with the stimuli that have been generated and driven and how many of them are going to match with the monitor. And then we declare what is the environment and uh, the test and the top test bench top. So, with all this of course, these things are going to be taken up in detail in the verification scenario, but I am going to list uh, how the scoreboard is written, how the monitor is going to test, uh, compare and then how the result is going to be asserted or what is the verification result which is going to be given in the uh, scoreboard uh, score. Okay. So, I will move on to the <coughs> design of an adder first as a combinational block and then as a uh, uh, sequential block with clock and reset. Uh -huh. Restart man. Restart Martidir. Illinda. In in the same session there, but pause Madi play. Nanik Beda. Halli. Okay. okay. So, here is my EDA playground, uh, my account has been opened. So, I am now looking at two different examples that is adder with interface and adder with interface, once as a combinational logic and uh, again as a sequential logic with clock and reset which are part of a global interface. So, I will now go for the code so as you see here is a very simple adder 
module adder with input A and uh, input B and uh, output C which is of 7 bits, uh, this A and B are 4 bit each and I am assigning uh, C as A plus B and this is going to be my module uh, behavior what it is going to do. So, here I have the testing that particular design with the help of an interface ok as you see and the I have instantiated the interface uh, INTF ok, I underscore interface and I have created the instance of the adder and uh, that is part of the interface and I am referencing it as I underscore intf dot a and dot b and dot c ok. And then initially I will set a as value 6, b as value 4 and then I have written the display statement where I am displaying what is the value of A and B and then uh, display the result uh, that is what is going to be C with the statement sum of A and B and C will be equal to what is the sum of A and B declared in the previous statement. Okay? So, I will run this particular code. So, here is a very simple module that can be uh, written with say 4 lines, 5 lines okay, of code and uh, it, it can be written in Verilog or uh, system Verilog, but the test bench is going to be interface, system Verilog. If you look at the interface, look at the interface what it has been written. Interface is a separate module as I said and EDA playground lists it as a separate uh, block of code ok and you see intf is the interface and I have listed a and b and c as the same width as in the module and I have declared them as logic. So, this is one uh, thing that uh, actually everyone should give an attention to. Uh, the language reference module of uh, the system Verilog uh, suggests the signals in the interface to be declared as wire, but it makes sense when we are declaring it as logic because we will allow the different values okay, other than uh, 0 and 1 okay, and also we are going to uh, throw it for other cases and it is going to be something good from verification point of view. So, that is why in practice, everyone declares the signals in an interface uh, more often as logic than wire. Okay. So, this is the interface. So, here is the test bench. I use this interface in my uh, test bench and then I run it now. Oh, this is all of the time it is going to happen. So, I will uncheck the output wave and uh, here. Uh, since I have given the value 6 and 4, I know for sure the result is going to be 10. In hexadecimal, it is going to be A. That is why I will now show that with the waveform and also show it with the uh, command window or the result window. And then you can look at how the interface has been used. So, I now run it. Okay, so signals have been uh, listed again, not an issue. So, you can view them in binary, you can view them in hex. So, you see A is 6, B is 4 and C is A in hexadecimal. In binary, it is very clear 110 one zero, one zero, plus 100 zero zero is 1010. Zero zero. So, now I will close this 
EP wave and look here the statement what I have given with the display value of A and B uh, which have been taken from the interface has been given here as value of A is 6, B is 4 and sum of A and B which is C equal to 10. So, this is the display statement as the value has been given in the test bench and the result have be, has been mentioned which was actually proven even in the waveform. So, this is one way of how we use the interface. Okay. And notice here this design is a combinational one and I do not use the clock and the reset. Okay. So, I will use another example for the same adder with the clock and reset and I use interface. Okay. So, just observe this is the another design. Okay. So, as you see here is an adder where there is a valid input is being given so that A and B are asserted and there is clock and reset and uh, with respect to clock and reset I will now evaluate what is C. So, the adder port list has been given here and here is the register which has been declared as temp underscore C okay. and the output is going to be C and now at the passage of the reset, uh, reset uh, we will now uh, make temp underscore C as the result means that the result is reset. Otherwise at the passage of the clock if the valid signal is true, then I will take temp underscore C as the sum of A and B. And as you see here, it is being used as non-blocking statement. That is the one that is suggested for uh, one uh, suggested for sequential designs. Okay. And I use here. As you see, I listed the transaction, I listed the generator and then the driver and I create the environment all in system Verilog. You can see the same interface has been used, okay. that is INTF with input logic clock and reset. This as you see is added with the clock and the reset to what was there earlier and along with the valid input. Okay. And then there is this transaction where I will uh, say uh, it is a class transaction and I am taking different bit values that are going to be random values and then I will have a function. Okay. And uh, that function is to display and I will write different display statement in this okay. and it, that is not returning anything other than the display statements what I have given. And I will now generate okay, what are the different uh, signals and I will now declare the transaction as random tra as trans okay. and then I am repeating the count by declaring int uh, type as uh, repeat underscore count is being declared as int and I am generating the uh, signal and then uh, sending it to the driver with the mailbox uh, uh, here and I will mark the event as ended once it is delivered and I use the function. Okay. The function with mailbox and the generator and I will declare what is this generator as okay, end function and then I write the task okay, of uh, repeating with respect to the repeat underscore count whatever the value that it takes okay, and then randomize the value 
and then display as declared in the generator. And then I write the driver and in the driver I can use a virtual interface, this will be discussed later. And I also create the mailbox handle because whatever is generated from the generator should be uh, consumed by the driver and then the function uses the virtual interface and the mailbox uh, that is created for generator to driver and I have been listed ok. And then there is a task where the virtual interface signals A, B valid all the inputs are going to be initialized uh, to 0 ok. And then display driver and we will display that the reset is ended that is whatever previous values have been set they have been made equal to 0. So, I have the main task again now I will take new values of A and B through transaction ok. And then there is this environment where I will put the generator, the driver and the transaction and I create their instances as well as the virtual interfa uh, interface ok. And then create the generator and the driver and then do the pretest ok. This I told you that this can be done ok. And then I will use the generator and driver mean in an another task and I use uh, this uh, with an additional as an additional task and hence join it with the main code with fork and join ok. And then there is this random test ok where I will create the new environment with already declared interface. And this has been actually repeated for 4 times and I set the repeat underscore count for the environment as 4 ok. And then I direct the test ok which extends that uh, particular transaction which has been already declared in uh, transaction SV and then I will uh, call, uh, declare a function to pre-randomize ok and I will randomize the values for A and B and then set them to 10 and 12 ok and I declare the environment instance ok and then call the new transaction ok as my underscore tr and uh, I repeat this repeat count of generator as 4 and it will be generating 4 different packets and the environment itself is repeated for 10 times ok. So, this is how I run the case ok test case with all of them the transaction generator driver environment and the random test and of course with the same interface to all of them. I will run this, notice that you may feel that I have added complexity to a very simple design as an adder, but the thing is that the same construct is going to be repeated irrespective of the size of the design and it may be anything as I said a processor design or a GPU or a memory or anything as a communication protocol IP ok. I will run this code, oh this is something by default it is happening, I will show with the EP wave but not with the file and I will run and you should see the console here ok, how the 4 cases of randomizing with zeros and reset being uh, set to 0. and run them now i can load the signals from the interface
and then I can take from DUT append selected and from top the clock and reset append selected append all close. As you are seeing, you are looking at only the clock and the reset. I will take DUT, append all and what you are going to see is A and B and C along with the clock and reset and temp underscore C and valid. I will close this just to see what is happening to the value close. So, as you see the reset has been uh, uh, going high and here in this case as I see with the reset high the all the results irrespective of uh, taking different values have been run, uh, initialized to 0 and then the result is also going to be 0 and C is going to be 0 valid is 0. When I set the next time valid high, the inputs have been D and 2 and as a result with the next clock pulse you are going to see the result, the radix I will take them as binary. So, it is something <coughs> 1101 which is going to be added with 0010 and the result is all ones. So, you can see here. And similarly, when next time valid goes high with the generator and driver be uh, sending the signals 6 and 4, now the result is 10. Okay. The same uh, is reflected here on temp underscore C and at the same instance when clock goes high, it is uh, asserted as C. And you see here next time uh, the value is uh, 0F and uh, here it is uh, B, 0 B and the result is 11010 zero, one, zero, and so on with the different other values. Sometimes you have taken the previous value itself of for A and B has been changed. So, that is it. So, the results have been put ok and now <coughs> I will get the signals from the top that is clock at reset and I can append all of this and then check what is going to happen. So, again I appended with clock and reset. So, the same thing is being shown. <coughs> okay. So, I will close this waveform window and then see what my console has given as the result. So, you see here Every case has been listed as generator, 4 cases need to be run, A as 13 and 2, 6 and, 6 and 4, 15 and 11, 15 and 5. Okay. The driver takes the same value and the C has been asserted 15, 10, 26 and 20 and of course, in the waveform we have seen in uh, waveforms we can see it in hex or uh, binary uh, <coughs> value ok. And the finish has been done ok as per the test bench where I have set what is the clock and what is going to be the run time and then uh, the results have been dumped to dump dot vcd and that has been declared. It is been written here only. Okay. So, the VCD will file dump all the files and uh, the environment has been completed and it shows all the results. Okay. So, this is the actual way of verifying the design with system Verilog construct starting with the interface, moving on with the transaction generator, driver and then we will also see some of the two designs later and uh, that is going to be using the scoreboard and the monitor. Okay.
So you can see all of these have been declared in that example and you could see how the verification is going to be done and it is irrespective of the size, all these need to be declared and of course the scenario uh, in which these are going to be used is different and hence each of them can repeat any number of times and as you see all of them are going to be the type class which is something uh, that has been used in the object oriented programming concept and except the test all of them are going to be class and the test is going to be the program. So this is how we use an interface to verify a design which is as simple as an adder with all the scenarios created for generator, transaction, driver and then the environment and as well as the test. Okay.